Today is Monday, January 23rd, 2017. And as you can imagine, this is the first week of President Donald J. Trump on the job. And things are starting to look better already. Yes, Donald Trump made it. There was many people on the internet who were fear-mongering. They would tell you that Donald Trump is not going to make it. They're going to kill him. They're only there for entertainment. These guys are only there to make millions of dollars. They're knuckleheads. And to make matters worse, they sing and dance with people who are loyal to a foreign power as Gentiles are out of work and suffering. I mean, how embarrassing is that? But we really do want to keep it positive today because we have some good news coming out. Things are looking brighter already. Donald Trump, this is only his third full day in office, and he's already starting to get the job done. Now, I'm not a big fan of executive orders, especially after we had eight years of Obama signing these executive orders with his left hand, with his brain in his right hand, idiots cheering him on the whole time. Nothing ever seemed to get done. More and more angry white men lost their jobs, and we went downhill quickly. So no, I'm not a big fan of executive orders, but we are in an emergency situation and things have to be corrected quickly. So I don't mind a few good executive orders and that's what we're going to talk about today. Donald Trump is signing a couple new pieces of documents, which I think is a good idea. Now the best news, of course, is there's going to be a federal employee hiring freeze. This is the executive order that I like the best. It looks like we're not going to be hiring any government pencil pushers for a while. This is good news. We really do have to shrink the federal government. It's too big. Donald Trump got elected with one of these promises that he was going to shrink the monster. And one by one, maybe we can eliminate these pencil pushers out of our life. They're nothing more than red tape thugs bureaucrats who come down on our life like a sack of bricks, EPA, FDA, business license, water testing, soil testing. I mean, you can't really do anything. You cannot even get a business together without having a hundred bureaucrats over top of you. So this is the first good news. If Donald Trump is going to create businesses, he knew he was going to have to reduce the federal government this is extremely good news. But I'll be honest with you, this is just a start. Oh, it's good. One by one, we can eliminate these bureaucrats, but if we're ever going to get our head above water, we're going to have to eliminate them by the dozen. They won't tell you this. Mainstream media won't tell you. It's all top secret. There's 40 million government workers all together. When you count them all up, it's all top secret. 40 million government workers. We got our work cut out for us. To get rid of these government workers is not going to be easy. But my hat's off to Donald Trump. He's already started it. He's already put a hiring freeze in place. And I say, hoorah! Now let's get on to that next bit of business he did because he signed another executive order. And this one is just as important. Withdrawing from TPP. This was one of his campaign promises also, that he was going to go nationalist. He was going to work for Americans and not for the globalists. So this is on par with what Donald Trump said during his campaign. He really is, so far, looking like he's going to come through with some of his campaign promises. By withdrawing from TPP, this is a good step. So I will say, this is a very good start for Donald Trump. It looks like it's going to be a good week for his administration. A good week for America indeed. One by one, we'll eliminate these bloodsuckers, these government bureaucrats, pencil pushers, who create nothing but pain and suffering for business owners. You see, they don't make anything. All they do is give business owners pain and suffering which means you cannot have a job. How are you going to start up a job if you have government bureaucrats all over you? And then, if you don't have a job, of course, then you have to go to the government begging for food. And that leads us to the next, it's a rumor, 
This could be, this may not be true, but I heard it through the grapevine. It may be a rumor. I heard that Donald Trump is also thinking about another executive order. And this one's very interesting also, because it also pertains to bloodsuckers. This executive order has to do with people who do not contribute to society. We're talking about protesters who get government subsidies. Now, as the rumor goes, the police are going to now check the IDs of anybody out there protesting. Just check their ID, write it down, cross-reference it with any government subsidies, a.k.a. welfare. If you're going to be out there protesting against Donald Trump, if you're going to protest against the government, fine and dandy, but don't expect a handout. Don't expect food stamps, a snap card, Section 8. Your government subsidies are cut off, so there's no reason for the police to take their baton out and beat you in the head with it. There's no reason for the police to come down hard on you. No, all they do is write your name down on a piece of paper. And if you get government subsidies, it'll be cross-referenced in the computer, and guess what? Your government welfare check is eliminated. Surprise, surprise, all the protests end immediately. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm just hearing this through the grapevine. It's not official yet, and... Quite frankly, I don't even think this is executive order has to be signed. All Donald Trump has to do is go out there and threaten to do it. Talk about it one day. He said, I'm thinking about signing this executive order. And once these little snowflakes find out that all oh, their benefits are going to be cut off, no more snap card, no more food stamps, no more Section 8, well, they'd be forced to go out and find a job, wouldn't they? They wouldn't have time to do any protesting because they'd have to look for work. But guess what? There'd be no cushy government job available for them because there's a hiring freeze. Yeah, this gets better and better. So they'd have to get out there just like my grandfather did during the Great Depression, and they're going to have to sweep the streets for minimum wage. They're going to have to clean the toilet. Again, for minimum wage. It's going to be tough. It always is when you're young and you don't have any skills. Oh, they might even have to ask grandma or grandpa if they can live in the basement while they get by because the minimum wage, they will not be able to afford their McMansion house. They're not going to be able to afford that big college program that makes them into idiots anyhow. No, they're going to have to get a job. That's how young people grow, with character. They get a job, and if it's cleaning toilets, so be it. Oh, they're not going to like it. No, these little snowflakes are going to protest, and they'll keep on crying like little babies until we take away their food stamps, until we take away their Section 8. And then they'll probably say, Oh, you got to pay for my college institution. you got to pay for my college training bullshit. What are you going to learn in college anyhow? Look at this idiot here. This is the college professor. This is what they actually teach the children. The irony here is that if the goal is to make government work better, to try to get it more under control, the hiring freeze is exactly the opposite of what you need to do. These dumbasses, they really don't know any better. This is what they're teaching our children. What they should be teaching our children is government, get the hell out of the way and let the businessmen create companies. And if you let the businesses create companies with no federal regulation, with no bureaucratic red tape, well, then you'll have jobs. These college professors are brainwashing our children into being little snowflakes who need their safe zones and trigger warnings. We really are in trouble if we keep on sending our kids to these colleges because these colleges make our children into idiots and morons. But as usual, I'm optimistic. I'm positive that once we take away their food stamps, once we take away their Section 8 and their Pell Grants, once we take away all their free money, they'll learn the hard way. They'll learn just like my grandfather did, just like my dad and myself did. They'll work hard and they'll get by and they'll learn to get character. How funny is it? The Chinese and the Russians now act more American than our own Americans. 
They don't have welfare in China, but yet they get by through hard work. This is something that we have to teach the snowflakes with a little bit of tough love. But as you know, this is only Monday. It's still early in the week. There's only one way that this week could get any better, and it already has, and that would be for the commander-in-chief, the leader of the federal government, Donald J. Trump, to make one phone call to Las Vegas, Nevada. He gets one federal judge on the line, and he says, Judge, stop the trial now. I do not want you to persecute our patriots anymore. That would make the week go perfect. That would be the ending of the most beautiful American Patriot Week ever. President Donald J. Trump gets on the phone. He calls Las Vegas federal court, tells the judge to stop the trial. We are not going to persecute American ranchers anymore. We've already done enough damage to the American rancher. As the commander-in-chief and the leader of the federal government, he could free Amon Bundy, Cliven Bundy, and all the patriots. He could free them with one phone call. Because on the 26th of this week, January 26th is the one-year anniversary of the day that Valerie Jarrett and Obama ordered an armed police state thugs to mow down an innocent man, an innocent rancher. As he laid there in the snow, he came out of the vehicle with his arms up. They put one shot into his side, his arms came down, and they mowed him down, and they let him bleed out in the snow. Armed thugs, by the order of Valerie Jarrett and Obama, the one-year anniversary, January 26th. The day that we cut the rancher down, we mowed the rancher down, we assassinated him and let him bleed out in the snow. Lord help us. Lavoie Finnicum would have been 55 years old. Had he lasted one more day on this earth, he would have been 55 years old. But no, they let him bleed out in the snow as Obama and Valerie Jarrett lay on the carpet. As they lay on the carpet and laugh like hyenas, they let our ranchers lay in the snow and blood. So yes, it has been a glorious week so far. But I'll know, I'll know as we close in on January 26th, I'll know if President Donald J. Trump has a heart. I will know if he has a soul. I will know if he is truly the leader of the American people. Because if he is, he will make one phone call to the federal courthouse in Las Vegas, Nevada. He will tell the federal judge to stand down. Stand down and let our ranchers free. They have broken no laws. They have broken no laws of God. All they did was had the audacity and the bravery to stand up to Harry Reid. The bravery to stand up to the BLM. And because they stood up to government thugs, they now sit in a courthouse, a federal courthouse in Las Vegas, where a federal judge persecutes them in the name of the government. One phone call by the commander-in-chief could end it all, and we could free Amon Bundy. We could free his father, Cliven Bundy, and we could let the ranchers do their job and do ranching. If America is going to be great again, we have to let our ranchers be free.